Yes. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome, Loon Tunists. We are in week four of Comics Camp 2020, and we're doing a special Wednesday session here to draw some Loon Tunes. Uh, what are Loon Tunes, you might ask? Well, where all things loony intersect with all things cartoony, you get <laughs> loons here, cartoons here, and the intersection would be loon tunes. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, cartoon some loons. And my name is Merrick Bennett. I'm a cartoonist. These are my hands. Um, we are also joined by a local guest artist here by the name of Sky. Sky, welcome. Thank you for drawing with us today. It's gonna to be wonderful fun to draw with you and to create some cartoon loons. So I have become totally enamored with these, these wonderful birds, these loons, just because I've been drawing so many of them. And I can't wait to show you um, some loon tuning techniques. So if you have a piece of paper and if you have a pencil, you can draw along with us. And if you're still looking for pieces of paper and pencils, that's great. I have some, um, information on my site about cartooning tools that you may want to collect and use. Thanks to Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Committee for um, hosting and setting up, helping us set up the Green July camps. And this is the very first comics cartooning workshop of our Green July series. So you can get more information about that over here or all of this linked from my website. Okay, got your pencil, got your paper? And let's get started. First, I'm going to give Sky a piece of paper, and I'll give Sky my own pencil here, and I'll take a new one. And I thought we'd do two activities today. I'll show you how I cartoon loons, and that's very different from actually drawing them. Um, and all the information I got from about loons, I'm getting from loon.org. So I'll flash that at the end. It's a wonderful site. They even have a live loon cam where you can see what the loons are up to right now, this very moment. Um, so I'll show you how I cartoon these loons and then I'll show you how we can cartoon some habitat. So the first part will be making loons of our own. So you could draw just pictures on a page like this or you can fold up your page the way I'm going to do. Totally up to you as the artist. If you'd like to fold your page with me, I'm gonna fold the page in half like this. You can do that now if you want. I'll put these other extra pieces of paper aside so it's easier to see. And then I'll fold it in half the other way. And I just do this. This is kind of my go-to starter for, for drawing a couple pictures at once because when I open that page, I now have four boxes to put ideas in. Now, if you're not folding and you're just drawing on a big sheet of paper, that's fine too. Totally up to you, the artist, and, and you can make those decisions. But we always start with pencil for all our comics camp, camp activities because we use this process here, the pie process. So we're gonna pencil our artwork, pull that up here. So we're gonna pencil our artwork, then we'll pass it by a reader if possible, and then we'll come in with ink and we'll make a black ink drawing, black and white ink drawing. But that'll come later. Today, I think we'll just pencil and get some ideas down. So pencil and paper it is. So I'm gonna start up here in the upper left because that's a good starting place. If you want, you can even draw a little line along these folds. Of course, if, you're, if you didn't fold and you're just drawing pictures on a big piece of paper, that's fine too. You don't need to have these boxes. But in this upper box, I'll show you my most basic loon tune. And as a cartoonist, I'm always trying to simplify my pictures. We're gonna keep it super simple today. And you can add more details if you want but I like to start my Loon Tune right about in the middle of this box, in the, of this panel. And I'm gonna do sort of a, a sideways teardrop. It's round on one end and pointy on the other end. See that? If I turn it like this, it looks like a teardrop or a drop of water falling, right? And that's the body of my Loon. So you can draw along with that. And if yours looks a little different from mine, that's great. Loons are all different shapes and sizes, you know, within a certain, uh, certain parameters, but they tend to have a rounded body like this. And this'll be, this'll be the tail over here, the pointy end. So over here on the round end, whichever side is your roundest end, we're gonna put a little circle, a little ways above, and that's gonna be the head. Now I'm, as a cartoonist, as a loon-tunist, 
I'm super simplifying these birds, right? Loons don't actually have circular heads. When you look at a loon or a picture of a loon, you'll see their heads are a little longer, but I'm gonna super simplify here. And then let's keep it super simple. We'll, we'll connect that head with a neck and that neck is just two lines. And if it looks a little thick, try making it a little thinner. The whole reason we're using pencil is you can move your lines around and change things if you need to. If you really wanna get fancy, you can try curving the neck a little, but for now I'm gonna keep it super simple. And let's make sure this looks like a head. We'll put a little circle inside there. The bigger the, this little circle, the more googly-eyed your loon will look. <laughs> Real loons have fairly small eyes, but I find for loon tuning, I like to make the eyes a little bigger. And then somewhere in that circle, I'll put a black spot. Now, if you put the black spot on the forward side of the circle, that loon's looking this way. If you put it towards the back, that loon's looking back. You can really change how that loon looks and make sure on the front of that head, we put a triangle. That's the beak. And the beak and the eye together give you a sense of where the loon's looking also. You know, if you draw the beak pointing up, that loon's looking at the sky. If you draw it pointing back, the loon's looking over its shoulder. That's, I love these simple cartooning techniques that create a sense of character and posture. So let's see, what's the next piece? Then we'll do a couple markings here. So. First, I'm gonna go from the tail and I'll do a slightly curving line along the loon's body. Or it could be a straight line, totally up to you. This is a simplified loon tune. And that I think of as the wing line. Above it will be the pattern on the loon's back. Below it is going to be a white belly. So we'll just leave that white for now. Um, and another marking that we can do is somewhere on this neck, we'll put a neck band in. So it's just a stripe. Then if you want to color now, we can color in just lightly. I'm just kind of scribble coloring the head and the neck and loons have very dark heads and necks. So that's gonna bring the character out. And that white band helps define the neck from the shoulders. And since we're thinking about colorings, let's do the coloring on the back. I keep that very simple. They're actually a black back with white spots but I just do a checker pattern. I go across like this, and then I go up and down like this, and I keep those lines pretty close together. And don't worry if they're not totally straight or perfectly evenly spaced. As long as it looks like a checkered pattern of little white squares on a black background, that's gonna be totally fine. And that's your basic loom, except there's one thing missing. Well, let's add a tail. Let's put a little black tail on there. There is one important thing missing, and that's the legs and feet, right? Now on a bird that walked around on the ground, I would expect the legs to be somewhere around the middle so that the bird could balance on its legs, right? And walk around on the ground, except loons don't spend a lot of time on the ground. They almost never walk on the dry land. They use their legs to power themselves while swimming. So before we do legs, let's add the water. This loon is floating in the water. I'm gonna draw a water line right across the picture here, right across my loon even. And loons float pretty low in the water, probably even a little lower than this, but our, our, our cartoon loons, they can bob up and down a little bit. So you see how I did that water? This is just cartoon water. I'm just going peak up for a wave, down on a curve, peak up for a wave. And it's the same kind of water I've been drawing since, I don't know, first grade or kindergarten when you draw cartoon <laughs> water, right? Simple way. Pretty simple way. Water, of course, is, is very interesting to try to draw, but I'm just cartooning it here, just like I'm cartooning a loon. So now I can do my loon's legs. And those legs, remember, aren't in the middle of the body. They're way towards the back. So let's give it two legs. They're going to start going back and then curve down. Start going back and then curve down. And you can make those curves slightly different because those legs kick back and forth. You could even, actually, let's, I'm gonna make one of those legs coming forward from the back like that. That looks like it's really kicking. Maybe I'll make the other leg kicking back even further. I love penciling my artwork first because that enables me to make these changes. If I drew directly with ink, I'd be stuck with whatever I put down. Okay, now the feet, the feet, 
um, two ways to draw the feet. I'll show you both ways. My first way, I'm gonna practice it over here, then I'll put it on the leg. My first way is to draw like a C shape and put a little M shape in it. See that? And that gives you toes with webbing. The other way is to draw sort of a triangle uh, or a tent shape and then put that webbing between them. Totally up to you. One, this one looks more cartoony to me. This one looks more like actual loon feet to me. So totally up to you, however you wanna do that. I'm gonna erase this from my lovely loon tune picture here and I'll choose, maybe I'll choose, I'm gonna try the tent feet. They're pretty big feet when they're spread out in the water like that. Oh, that looks great. But those are chicken feet until you add the webs. And the webs are how they propel. We don't themselves. want chicken. No, this is not a swimming chicken. This is, <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, well, chickens don't paddle around in the water, right? So they don't have those webs. And maybe, since this is underwater, maybe we even do like some lines showing that it's really swimming there or some kicking action lines on the legs. And that loon is, oh, that really makes the loon swimming along. So there's a basic loon tune. Right. If you go on uh, loon.org and you check out the lo live loon cam and you check out all the pictures they have, you're going to see that I have simplified this animal super simplif simplificationally, right? Because I wanted to just cartoon it, draw it quickly, and get at some of the adaptations and some of the forms of its body. Um, so let's actually let's let's look at how this animal has adapted to act in its environment. We can go down below into the water underneath here. And let's draw a loon sort of in its natural element doing what it does best. It's gonna be diving below the surface of the water here. Again, if you didn't draw boxes, if you just have one big sheet, then you can just draw down a little further and you can try this. So a swimming loon looks a little different. I'm gonna take that teardrop shape and I'm gonna bring it down. I'll sort of angle it down because this loon is not swimming along the surface. It's diving down, right? So go ahead and try a teardrop shape that's falling a little more here, down into the water. I'm gonna rearrange these pencil lines, my flexible penciling. Always, always starting with pencil, then moving on to ink. So I'll pencil all my pictures here. My loon's body, so you can find the tail, you can find where the head goes. And a little ahead of the shoulder, we'll put that head stretched out on the neck, looking forward. And this, I mean, this is water falls and it forms this shape as it falls, right? So that's kind of how our loon wants to be shaped as it moves through the water. This is a very efficient shape. So there's the head. Now, if you're drawing the, if you're drawing the head going up and the body going up, you're going to find your loon is surfacing, which they do after they dive. So that's okay to do. You can decide, right? If it's surfacing, it'll look more like that. It'll be coming up. So that's fine. Let's make sure the head is connected with the neck, a little thinner than the head, right? <laughs> Very important for our loons. And then let's put the beak straight forward now. That beak is really pointy. And there's a, there's a too short beak and a too long beak as you're drawing loon tunes. <laughs> You'll get a sense of it. This loon is a, maybe a little plumper than this loon, I think. And then we'll put the eye on there. You can decide if you want to do the eye before the beak, the beak before the eye, the neck after the, it's a, totally up to you as long as you get all the parts there. And then I'm thinking, I'm going to put my legs going straight back here. This loon has kicked and is plunging through that water. Look at that. Wow, that really, I'm going to keep my same tent feet. So that means triangle, middle bar, triangle, middle bar. What I love about cartooning in general is that you can, with a couple lines, you can create those feet. With a couple lines, you can create the face of the loon. It doesn't take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of detail. What you really have to do is, like I've been saying, keep it super simple and your readers can read it very quickly then. All right, so we did the teardrop shape. We did the circle head, put the eye and the beak on there. What's missing? Maybe the neck band? What about the wings? Oh, the wings, yes. So when, when I draw my diving loons, I kind of, doesn't it look like these legs are on either side? So this is the back, right? Even though I drew the side of the head. So I just draw the checkers all across the back. It's a lot of lines, but it's really worth it because it's easy to see that loon then. 
It's kind of a nice pattern on the page. Makes it very different. That, that checker mark kind of connects it with this loon and I can see it's either the same character or their friends diving. And I might, if I feel like it, I might add a little tail at the end. But if I forget the tail, it doesn't look like it's missing that much. Those tails are kind of shortish. Doesn't that look like a ping pong paddle or something too? Um, let's remember to gently black in the head and neck. And the beak too, actually, their beaks are sometimes quite dark. Let's see. Although there are, there are lighter parts. You'll have to look at the photos. Um, look at some photos on loon.org and we'll look into what those beaks look like and we'll come up with a, a detailed way to do the beaks. Now, since this one is down below the surface, I think I'm gonna make some water lines going off to either side. It's like that beak and that head are cutting through the water and maybe some turbulence lines going off and they kind of go off to either side as this loon dives down in. The other thing I like to add into these diving pictures are really nervous looking fish, right? <laughs> I'll draw a fish going, oh no, look out, here comes a loon. And I just do cartoon fish at this point. We have, um, we'll show you, we'll, we'll look at how to draw some perch and some sunfish, which are the loon's favorites. You can do cartoon fish with little sticks for fins. You can draw, you could draw a little cartoon fish being chased by the loon. Give it some triangle fins if you want, totally up to you. This loon is about to get some breakfast here, I think. This is so fun. I love, I love putting these, keeping these super simple shapes. If you can draw a circle, a straight line or straight-ish line uh, and connect those lines and draw curved lines, then that's all you need to draw these loons and they come to life for you. Maybe we could take a look at your sky. How's it coming? We'll, we'll bring Sky's page over and, oh, look at this. Oh, I love it. You know what I noticed different here? You drew your legs with doubled lines. So your loon has thicker legs. They're more muscular. And the way it's kicking. Oh, it's like it's like it's looking up, getting ready to fly. Maybe in the next step of the story, it would spread its wings and run across the water as it took off. And meanwhile, this loon, oh, that's cool. I drew my loon going after a fish, and you sort of drew the next moment in the story. The loon has caught that fish and is swimming up. What do you think? Some turbulence lines around it to show it rising through the water. That's very cool. See, this is so fun. I really recommend when you're, when you're doing your loon tuning, um, invite a friend to loon tune with you. You can work on the same piece of paper together or you can work separately. <laughs> Just be careful banging your desk with your knee, right? Um, okay, two more loon examples that I wanna show you today. And this is just to get us started on loon tuning. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna think of this as, I know we connected the water down here. I could even erase this line, couldn't I? And that could be one big picture. But this, the next two examples I wanna show you are actually two very different scenes. So I'm gonna double this line and keep those boxes separate. So up here, we'll do a quick loon tune of the loon doing its other, um, one of its other actions that all loons do at some point, and that's flying through the sky. Now loons actually are really different from other birds because their bones aren't as hollow. They're more dense, or at least that's what, that's what I learned from reading on loon.org. They, they, that's why they sit lower in the water. They don't float as well, because if you're gonna dive, you don't wanna be floating at the top and be fighting to get down. You wanna be able to dive, so they're heavier. So they also don't fly quite as well. They're kind of like flying bricks, but <laughs> let's see. But they can fly perfectly fine. They can fly better than I can. So we'll start with that, that teardrop shape and it's gonna be flying across. If you wanna try doing it in a different direction, feel free to reverse directions here. Um, it's a bit like diving in that the head isn't up above it. The head's gonna be straight ahead of it. So we'll put that stretching its neck out, straining to keep in the air. We'll put the neck on there. As you know, the beak is gonna go straight forward. Of course, if I wanna draw my loon looking down or looking up, I can move that beak around. But when they fly, it's pretty much straightforward. Also, I can get this effect. If I put the eye pointing down, that looks like it's flying, but also looking down. Maybe it's looking for a safe lake to land in. So now um, 
I don't know. I, like I say, I keep this super simple. I'm not even going to draw the feet because the feet get tucked up under the belly. I'm going to take the approach of the diving. I'm just going to show two wings and I just do a curved line. Whoops. I'll just do a simple curved line like that and a curved line going up and down. And then I do bumpiness behind. Those are the feathers in back. Now, loon wings actually look quite different from this, but this is a cartoon loon, remember, a loon tune. So you can get away with a simplification like that. Maybe we'll add the tail. That's looking cool. As long as a reader looks at it and sees it as a flying bird and has learned that it's a loon, they'll understand it. So we do need to add our neck band. We do need to add our checks on the back, just like for diving. I just show the whole back because if I leave the bottom white, it looks like a wing is coming out of its belly. Kind of spoils the effect. Keep it checked. Again, I'm just lightly scribble darkening the head and neck. And when I come back to ink it, that's when it'll become totally black. And I think the wings, I like to do the wings blacked in too with ink. Of course, if you want sort of a feather pattern, you can do those bumps again and again if you'd rather focus on the feathers, but I kind of like to just lightly black them in with the pencil. And this loon, maybe, maybe we don't do turbulence lines that are wavy, maybe we do like speed lines, whoosh, whoosh, right? And that makes it flying super fast. Now let's see a couple setting details. Maybe it's flying over some hills. That, oh, that really raised it up high. Just putting that single line in there, boom, put it in the sky. If you want to get fancy, you can tuck some hills behind those hills. And behind those hills. And yeah, behind those hills. as behind far those as you hills. want to go with that. Um, if you want to put like a little, uh, maybe some water down here, totally up to you. I like to keep everything kind of simple, looking from the side uh, so you can see all the parts. Not Things don't get too much uh, jumbled up. So loon tuning, we keep it all spread out and simple. Maybe I'll put like some sky details in too. If it's warm and sunny, that's probably all you need. If it's cold and sunny, like towards the beginning or end of the season, maybe I put some little snowflakes and things in, but I think it's warm and sunny. It feels like a beautiful July day for this loon to be flying over the lake, looking down. Or maybe it's, maybe see if you can get your loons calling out too. Sometimes they, they make that amazing loon call and you can see if you can figure out a way to get your loons singing and calling from flying around. You know, when they go out over the lake and they fly around and call over and over again. All right. And then our fourth picture. If I'm going a little too fast, we're archiving this video. You can come back and watch it again. For the fourth picture, I want to show you one other action that loons do, and that is nesting. The only time you'll see them on dry land, pretty much the only time is when they're on a nest. And right now, actually, I've been watching the, uh, the live loon cam at loon.org because they are nesting and they are raising some eggs that are just about to hatch. So that's good to keep an eye on. So if you're looking at nesting loons, you'll see basically a nest. That'll be the top of the nest. And the nest is basically a, a pile of grass and leaves. So I just draw a few lines kind of piled and curved on that side, a few lines piled and curved on that side. Your lines, yeah, you can cross hatch, you can go any which way. I draw a few lines coming down from the middle. Maybe I'll weave some in here. Maybe I'll add some others here and there, maybe a stick or two, gets a little messy. And then I put the, I just do the top half, just the top side of the teardrop in there, maybe the round side there, the tail there, that'll be the body. So the head will go up here. And from there, it's all the same, except you don't have to draw feet or even a tail if you don't want to. I mean, the tail could stick out a little. Um, and maybe I'll make this one like looking up across the page at this loom. So they all kind of look at each other. We'll put the neck on there, the neck band. Once you've drawn, you know, a hundred loons, it becomes second nature. Whoop, that beak is too thin. All right, do all this lightly blacked. And in a moment, I will show you what it looks like to ink them. There we go. And let's not forget where they put their nests. So 
it's always, always, always right at the side of the water. So definitely there's gonna be some water there. Maybe it's on a couple rocks. So I'll just put a curvy line and some dots. Put a couple rocks there, or maybe three rocks, how about? They always like to have it up above the water and they can jump out of the nest into safety in the water and dive and get away if there's any danger. And then they like to have some grass or, or bushes around it. So let's build this loon some grass. So this is a safe nest. Maybe a couple stands of grass poking out here and there. And if you wanna put bushes, I like to do just bumpy cartoon bushes like this and you can kind of pile them around each other. That looks really nice actually when you pile a whole bunch of bushes up. Maybe another rock here. And that's all it takes, maybe a little grass. You can kind of make it up because these loon nesting sites have a lot of different features. Maybe it's trees or other things like that. You can see how you can protect and, and guard your loons. You could draw fish in here or you could draw other water details. Totally up to you. Loon tuning is very, uh, very open to creativity. Let's check in with um, sky here and see what your flying and nesting loon looks like. Oh, look at that. This flying loon went over the mountain. Maybe this one is, maybe she's singing and she's like leaving a lake. It almost looks like she's flying off to go to the seashore or something after the season's over. And this loon is very well hidden. I see the nest, but it's very hard to see among all that grass. And it's right near the water's edge. So if danger comes, that mama or papa loon can jump out of the nest and into the water. Beautiful. All right. Wonderful, folks. I, I love drawing these loons with you, and I can't wait to see what you draw to make your own loon tunes and bring them to life. These are four basic actions, right? Swimming, diving, flying, and nesting. And if you work those into these different settings and just see what kind of actions they do, or read up on loons at loon.org and other sites, which Green July campers are doing all month, um, we're going to learn a lot about loons, and this gives us a way to kind of play with it and tell stories about them. So two things I said I'd show you is what the inking looks like, and then I'll show you a couple hints of, I'll show you a way we can play with the habitat and make some lake environments, right? So as we're penciling, inking, and then erasing, once you've, once you've whoops, once you've penciled your page, then you can come in and you can ink your loon, your loon tune. And that means just going back over your pencil lines and you're gonna see an immediate change in the picture, right? It, it really jumps off the page. It's much easier to see. Where the pencil line is kind of gray and, and loose and I didn't really black it in on purpose, um, the ink will make it super dark and super light, high contrast, easy to see. See, this is where I'm blacking in the head and the neck. Wow, it jumps off the page and that's gonna grab the reader's eye and show them, hey, it's a loon right here in the middle of this panel. And you can try all different experiments as you ink. Maybe I want my water to have a thin line like this. Although sometimes I might want my water, maybe I'll come in with a marker and I'll make that water thicker if that makes it look a little heavier and easier to see the difference between the water and the loon. And don't forget to do those feet and the check marks under there. Because the next step, I don't have to follow those check marks exactly, do I? Even though you can still see some pencil lines visible, that's okay because the next step of our process, remember pencil, ink, erase, with the next step, we'll come back in here and we'll gently, gently erase all those pencil lines, clean up our picture, and then it's ready to share. <laughs> yeah, if you're erasing and the feet disappear, whoops, we have to go back and make sure those are inked in too. And all these details will get inked. Even the water lines, even the lightest grass, you wanna ink it all. I mean, look at the difference. That's so much easier to read. If you're reading the picture, like I do as a cartoonist, that's so much easier to read than the pencil lines. Okay, there we go. So there, there's some, there's some uh, fun you can do. You can design your own loon tunes, see what they do in their habitats. Then you can go in if you have a black inking pen and you can ink them. And we posted on Green July's site 
And on Comics Camp, we have a lot of notes about tools you can use. So I'll leave you with a challenge. And that'll look like this. You can do this alone or you can do this with a friend. You'll need a new sheet of paper. Here you go, Sky. I'll give you a piece of paper. And the challenge is this. If you want to create your own habitat for your Loon Tunes, you can take this page and right across the middle, you can put a cartoon waterline. Now, if you're doing this with a friend, like I'll do this with Sky here, we might want to put our pages together. And this is where your cartoon waterline will come out. Then we can, then we'll have an extra long lake here and we can design it together. So you can draw your own cartoon waterline from there. And then you can go about building your own islands, your own shores. So maybe I'll start over here and I'll make a shore. And I usually start with rocks. So I just do these kind of curved lines, although they really could be any shape, couldn't they? Look at some rocks around you if you have a, a lake and some rocks near you, or look at some pictures of lake rocks. And you can put a couple rocks in, and then you can put a couple stands of reeds or grass in between those rocks, behind the rocks, maybe even in the water itself away from the rocks. And you just kind of build up a little land here. Maybe I'll put some you know, the blueberry bushes near us are almost getting ripe now. So maybe there's some high bush blueberries along these rocks. Maybe there's some reeds over here. Maybe this is open water. And then we'll see what Sky's doing over here. And we'll, we'll add these together and have a nice big lake for the loons. And remember you have Sky up here, actual Sky in the paper. So maybe we'll put some, not, the name. not your name, Sky. So we'll put some clouds up there. Down here, we have all sorts of different places for fish to hide. Maybe we even draw some more rocks down here at the bottom of the lake. You can really design your own loon habitat. And then you can draw some loon tunes into it. If this goes right to the edge of the page, that's going to look like a shoreline an open lake, and maybe Sky will put an island in the middle of her page, and so on. And you can do this habitat. It's like an x-ray vision view of what's under the water and what's over the water. Let's think about plants, rocks, um, other animals, other life forms that might be in here, and see what happens when you loon tune them. Remember, loon tunes, the uh, intersection of loon information and facts and cartooning skills and storytelling. That's where our loon tunes live. And that's the kind of habitat we're building here. So next time we'll look at habitat a little more and we can look at more loon actions, but we'll pencil and then ink our pages until then. And um, if you are looking for daily activities, you can sign up, check out Green July. I'll post a link to the registration page over here at my site. If you're looking for daily comics making activities, include more Loon Tunes action. Uh, we'll be doing those pretty much daily all summer long under the Comics Camp banner. And you can join up over there or at patreon.com slash Mark Bennett. And remember to share your pie. Once you have drawn your, um, your penciled, inked, erased your page, feel free to share it and at me, Merrick Bennett, um, so that I see that you have shared it. It's been a lot of fun drawing with you folks. Before we go, let's take a quick look at how this big lake looks. We'll clear these away. We'll see what Sky has so far. Even though it's not finished, we'll put these pages together. So here we have a shore and then open lake and we made sure our water lines up. And then over here, oh, look at that. It's tall like oak trees on a, on a grassy island with lots of rocks along the shore. That looks like a great place for a loon nest because it's out in an island and safe from predators, hopefully, or hopefully. safe from, yeah, we'll see. And then a distant shore over here. Or and maybe it's another island. Maybe another island and lots of room for diving and fishing. All right, we're gonna fill up this lake habitat with loons and other animals, and we'll share it with you when next we meet. So head on over to the site. We'll post some more links there. We'll juggle some paper at my desk here and we'll keep drawing. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday for the next Loon Tuning. And until then, keep your pencils and your inking tools going. And if you wanna know more about loons, well, we'll post a bunch of loon resources over here and at the Green July site. All right, folks, thank you very much for drawing with us. Thank you for caring about loons and taking the time to loon tune with us. We will see you next Wednesday.